Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at o'clock. And this is my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, isn't it? And uh, these are people in the land that are freaking awesome right here. Uh, we are going to be doing the continuing series of all the teams, off seasons, what they did in the their uh, free agency, maybe a little bit of the draft, and where they might be going. And we've got a very interesting team we're going towards now. We've did we're doing a Perlo alphabetical order, which <laughs> means that it's sort of you know kind of in the alphabetical orderish sort of way. Uh, we did Dallas, and uh, we, we didn't get much love for that. You're going to have to go check that out. Dallas was freaking awesome. You want to check that out. And we were with the Professor Joe Bork when we did the Dallas one. And we were with the Steel Flyers when we did that one. Professor Joe Bork, uh, thank you for coming. And Steel Flyers, you as well. It's awesome having you every time you got, drop into this fine programming. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Steel, as before we get into the Chicago stuff. Well, thank you very much for sending the Perlo copter to fetch me there to fly, to fly into your Seattle. Yeah, Melissa loves it. Melissa Just fly into your Seattle apartment there, man. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. like it. We like yeah. it. Always a Landing pleasure. on the top is fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> always a pleasure being here with you guys, man. It's always a blessing uh, being with the, the people that know what they're talking about, you know, and you can't go wrong with that, so, like, Thank you very much for having me on, man. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, uh, you as well, how uh, how have you been doing, my friend? You enjoying the uh, kind of uh, sort of end of baseball, middle of NFL, and hockey's almost coming up to time right now? Yeah, um, yeah, it's weird. It's been fun. It's very weird how this year is um, played out, obviously, with um, – having hockey and basketball come back basically identical and be going on the same nights until hockey hit its finals and then basketball. And then we, of course, have baseball now, and then you got to just have football for a while until basketball comes back reversed a little bit first, and then hockey comes back. So um, it's been fun following stuff. It's weird to have the off season now. But Chicago, since they did commit to going into a rebuild, they're definitely a fun team to – talk about with some guys that emerged more last year on their team so uh, definitely a fun team to talk about so excited to get into it yeah let's do that there's lots to talk about here the big story of course we might as well just get right into it because it pretty much goes into the every elephant aspect. in the room what's that the elephant in the room the elephant in the room yeah the big story uh which pretty much talks about everything they've done up until now and where they're going all in one place is, uh, of course, the uh, Chicago Blackhawks come out and tell all the land that they are in a rebuild. This after they trade Crawford to the New Jersey Devils and claim that they're going to go with their young, unproven goaltenders. They trade Sod to the Colorado Avalanche for a young Zadar a youngish Zadaroff. And then... Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Taves gets up all uppity and goes, whoa, 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 what, what, what's going on? <laughs> we didn't know about any rebuild or anything. And then they come out and say to everybody, oh, yeah, we're rebuilding. You got us. But uh, so anyways, <laughs> what? Yeah, well, Steel, since you're having that sort of with uh, Crawford, though, reaction to... to this, I think I'm going to start with you, Steel. Yeah. I was going to say, think though. What's that? No, go ahead. I go was going to say to correct about Crawford, though. He got signed by New Jersey because they just let him walk, remember? Well, did Crawford, I say yeah. Trader? Yeah, yeah, Crawford was yeah, kind of heated walk. about that. It's not even Yeah, Crawford trade. was a little annoyed. Yeah, because right. he was annoyed about that as well. Uh, he expressed his um, annoyance at that. So, Anyways, Steel, what do you think about all that? When you yeah. have the kind of folks that they have on their roster – and again, they come out and say that they're going to be in rebuild mode. And they don't really do much of anything to rebuild. <laughs> I mean, they they traded Saad, right, to the and they also got rid of uh, Gilbert. Dennis Gilbert was part of that Saad deal, right? And they got um, uh, also they got Anton uh, Lindholm with that, too. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, two prospects going back and forth, yeah. Okay, but two sort of prospects. One guy might play, one guy might not play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they they're, they got rid of their two best goalies. They they let uh, uh, let Laner walk, mm-hmm. or late, late, you know at the trade deadline or whatever. They 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 didn't give out get much for him. Yeah. No, no, and and he went to uh, to um, Vegas Thanks. and then signed a big contract. I mean, so they let their goalies walk. They're going to go with their three young goalies. Okay, well they're very unproven. You know what I'm saying, and. They didn't really do anything. They didn't go get anybody really. I mean, Brett Seabrook is on IR. They haven't signed Dylan Strom yet, right? They they did get, they're going to probably put Alex Nylander in with some top six minutes, you know, but it's just like you said. Taze came out and said, wait a minute, what? Huh? You're yeah. doing what? Yeah. And yeah, that didn't go over well. You know what I mean? And so, uh, and I just haven't seen them do enough to be as a rebuild. You know, if you're going to say that you're going to be in a rebuild, then I would expect you to be trading off more of the um, veteran players and trying to get more draft picks and trying to get more, you know, younger players and or whatever the case is. But they didn't really even do that either. Not yet, anyways. Yeah. I mean, not yet, you know. I mean, or are they? What I don't know. Yeah. I know it's kind of odd. It's kind of odd. Yeah. What, what do you? Yeah. It's kind of. What do you think about that, Joe? Like, it, it is kind of an odd situation there. What do you? What do you think? Rebuilds tend to take a while. I mean, it reminds me of the Phillies. The Phillies got rid of Jimmy Rollins, hung on to Howard, and I'll leave for a while longer, and then you have to figure out a way to get rid of the others. Where. The Flyers kind of just ripped off the Band-Aid to go into the next um, <laughs> line of people by trading yeah. both people at the same time in Carter and Richards. Uh, it's just the Kings don't have that luxury because you got two people with above $10 million salaries. The Flyers did not have that. Yeah. So people will trade for Patrick Kane. The problem is they probably can't. So like, you have to find a team that can – and well, everybody's gonna want him, but that can, and that's not common. Yeah, in today's Wanting market, to especially and being able to afford him. Yeah, and in today's climate, especially, um, paying someone ten and a half, uh, like the team tried, the Blackhawks might have to take at least two million of that for a team in this climate to be comfortable trading for Patrick Kane, because then you'd be at eight and a half. I don't think people want to go much higher than eight and a half in today's uncertainty. So that's why it's it's tougher. The guy that, if his defensive numbers weren't going, like he's still good, don't get me wrong. So if you put him in a good defense that you can pay him and he blends in well, he'll be fine. It's just Duncan Keith's defensive numbers have been going down. I think it's going to be as easy as people think to trade his $5 million. It's not going to be as hard as trading Tays, who gets paid ten something, who isn't the um, all-encompassing Jonathan Tays used to be. He's still very good, but he's not the like five-tool guy he used to be. Where Keith is maybe a two-tool, a three-tool player, but five-tool guy he used to be at best. Yeah. So, like, he's really started the hard steps, especially speed as well. And, He's a good guy to mix in if you have $5 million and your defense is young and you need a veteran that you know will play good with all your young defensemen. It, that would be a good situation, maybe, but he's not a guy that would fit into every defense um, because he just would be too slow or he would he would be too similar to their other players defensively. Or he'll just go to another rebuilding team, but he probably won't do that because he has an NMC, so he'll probably only go. Like, the other thing with Keith is they need a team. He needs to okay a team. Okay a team that's decent. And not every team that's good needs defense that badly to pay Duncan Keith five-something million dollars. There's probably someone else out there that they would say, we can get this guy for less than five-something million dollars that'll do about the same than what Duncan Keith can do 
at this point of his career. Now, there's not really anybody out there you're going to say they can do the same of what Patrick Kane can do. So if somebody could pay Patrick Kane, they will trade for him. That one's a completely different scenario. The, the thing is, it's just the, the only guy that's completely different in my eyes is Kane because of how ridiculous he is and he'll probably be good at least to his 30s plus his contract end when he's about 34 going on 35. Yeah. Where Taze ends at about 35, but has already, like Jonathan Taze is a guy, if someone really needed a center and like they're literally going, okay, the thing that's keeping me from cup contention is having this defensive center that can score also and just be a face-off wizard. Well, you're probably going to trade for Taze then, but that's like a perfect scenario. Um, so like, I feel like Kane's way more likely to get traded. Taze still had 60 points, so if he continuously puts up his pace, maybe he'll be more likely to get traded after this year. If the Blackhawks did want a full rebuild and trade Kane, that could potentially happen at whenever the heck it is since this year's old different deadline is even because they're saying yeah. they want to rebuild now. Yeah. Where if people find money, they're trade for Kane this year if what they need is a dynamic overall player, which everybody usually wants, but it's a, it's a definition of want and need where like imagine if um somebody like the flyers are doing really good or the other for example they actually have the money to do it they do it and um a team like columbus who traded away a bunch of people and then never really brought in a bunch of people uh back in um go yeah. okay um now that we kind of just kept with our team we should trade for we need a more dynamic player. Let's trade for Patrick Kane. I think he would be the more likely first part of the tipping pole for the rebuild just because of how Hall of Fame level still he plays at points per game or above a point per could game for per season. Yeah, yeah, where Taze is a notch below that now. Like Kane is still at the upper echelon notch where Taze is a notch below that now, so paying them the same, you're going to trade for Patrick Kane before you trade for Jonathan Taze. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say that for, I, sure, for sure Kane is the most tradable player uh, at the, for three years at $10.5 million, even at his full salary. I do believe you could find a team that's willing to take him for a cup run. Uh, I, I, By the way, I'm doing a little series on each team trading for Kane. You might want to check that out on the NHL Pearls of Wisdom there. If you haven't watched them already, I don't know why you wouldn't because everybody's watching it. But maybe you might not have, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kane would definitely be the one. Uh, as far as what Chicago is doing, and Taves, Taves, you could eat $2 million of his salary and possibly, like say Minnesota lights up the world they have no center, and for some reason they think we're going to win. A, you know, you're going to eat two million of his salary, uh, and they take him on for eight and a half instead of ten and a half. It's a slight possibility, and Chicago can eat salary no if they're work. doing what you what you what the confusing thing that you're saying there, Ron, is that if they're really rebuilding, they're going to eat salary and get rid of these guys, right? Because that's what rebuilding is what you what you do, that's right? That's the only way. That's the only way they're going to be able to do it. Yeah, why would you need to yeah. be okay to ha eat salary because you're not going to hit the cap anyways because you're rebuilding. But, but, I, but they so might, though, to, see, but they might, There's though. one other part of that, too. I just want to say this real quick. You got Like you said, you got to convince these guys to go. So a really good way of doing that is paint a picture of how much you're going to suck. And the best way to suck <laughs> is to have goaltending. So if you don't have goaltending, that is I, I play in hockey when I was young. The most frustrating thing a player can players can go through, skaters can go through, is having crappy goaltending. Because you can do everything you want to to win and you're not gonna win. So sorry to run on you there, Ron, but go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh no, no, no that's okay. Um when you have a a, a team that has the, the capabilities of a Patrick Kane, and he's not even there. Look, this is just a rumor that he might even be considering. He might still stay with the team. Yeah. You know and if that's the case, and all bets are off, and everything that we just talked about is for naught. Mm -hmm. and, and I wouldn't necessarily blame him if he wanted to stay there. 
You know what I mean? But then again, who's going to be able to, to buy him is basically what it's going to come to. Who's going to be able to take some of his salary on? Because I'm going to tell you, the Blackhawks had to take a million of Saad's salary, okay? They had to eat a million of his salary yeah. in that trade, okay? Mm -hmm. And they brought another player over as well, too, okay? Mm -hmm. And now they're also going to be trying to either move Kane or keep Kane. Okay, so they don't really have the room, and they still have to re-sign Fromm. If they want to. Strong. If they want to, or Strom, okay? They still have to re-sign him if they want to, and he's going to count against the cap, and they only got five mil. Yeah. Um, so they're not really going to be able to get much salary, <clears throat> not gonna, especially if they want to sign Strom. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all I'm saying. They're not going to be able to eat a lot of salary and then still try to get rid of Patrick Kane and still try to do some of the other things and still, quote-unquote, be a rebuild unless they get a whole huge boatload of stuff from Patrick Kane, meaning players, NHL-ready and or prospects and or picks and or something. They're probably going to have to take some salary back, but they can still get young players for Kane that will kind of... Like, it's okay to pay somebody if it's a young player. I think that's going to be the big thing. As long as it's a young player, they'll take money back, which will make it more likely that King gets traded. Do you not agree, Joe? Because they um, do have some – they can take some money back for sure. Yeah, they could take some money back. I still feel like it won't be before – if it happens, it would probably happen sooner to the start of the season than – that's also because one caveat that I think has to fall to know exactly in line where Patrick Kane could go is Mike Hoffman. Um, if Mike Hoffman goes to the Blue Jackets, then I don't think the Blue Jackets are going to also pick up Patrick Kane. That would be a lot of money into two people when they're not even a team that spends a lot of money in general usually compared to <laughs> other teams they spend more savvy wise so yeah um where a team like the avalanche uh again they're a team that's rumored to be into both of them if they get mike hoffman they're probably not going to also get patrick king so it's like a lot of the teams that are rumored for these guys are kind of in line so one tipping stone, which is going to be Hoffman first, obviously, because he's in the free agency. I would presume he'll sign before Kane gets traded. Uh, that's going to affect, and then that'll help us out in picking exactly where Kane will probably go, because then Hoffman will fall into place. And that's, that's what will really determine this. But I think what you said for showing they're going into a rebuild is going with the young goaltenders. Yeah. When you go with your young goaltenders and just say, hey, we'll just keep rolling with this and save money here, it's showing you that you're trying to save your money now and use it kind of um, in a very savvy way where it seems like Delea, just from looking at how they paid, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets more of, like, if he starts emerging and gets more of because he's a guy that's paid uh, the $1 million compared to the eight fifty of Subban. It seems like they gave him a little bit of a hey, we think you might, because you look really good in the minors, like I said on the one video, like we think maybe you can be at least a good backup in the NHL, so we'll give you the $1 million uh, dollar, uh, price tag and see what you can do as a starter for us in our rebuilding period yeah. to then maybe become backup in the, in the future. But a guy that they picked up, like you guys said, Zadorov, that was also probably a rebuilding move, not because they want him to be part of their rebuilding, but because he's an RFA after this year, where if they can get him to have his best season, he's probably going to be traded at the trade deadline as a right-handed defense into somebody that somebody desperately needs a uh, defenseman, um, or a left-handed defenseman, excuse me, to somebody that desperately needs a defenseman that can kind of hit and block shots and be more aggressive so like everyone always at the deadline i think that was more of those pickups let's get a guy that we can flip maybe so we can get more assets and that's kind of what rebuilding teams do i wouldn't be surprised if they do that if a comp for a walmart who are also yeah they brought in walmart point. also yeah. RFAs yeah. after this year um they would try to do something like that nylander i think 
uh, if he starts going taking off, they're obviously going to keep because they've always had confidence and yeah. Him since they brought you know, that's him a, that's a great point there, Joe. Well, too because a lot, a lot of their players for next year are going to be RFAs or UFAs. You know what I mean? So yeah, they're, kind a, of, they, they're in a place where they can start painting a different picture. I still mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, um, Walmart and Zadaroff. They're not old, like 25, but they're not super young either. So they're nice right. pickups in the sense that, hey, we'll bring them in if they if we like what we see, then we'll keep hey. them at their 25. <laughs> exactly. If not, Zadaroff, guys like Zadaroff, like uh, Joe said, are always uh, somebody that teams want in the playoffs. We saw with Dallas the importance of having – like he's six foot six, six foot six or six foot five. He's huge. He's an absolute huge. I think yeah, he's. His door off is big. Yeah. 230, yeah, yeah. 240 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, like some of, the, if you look, if you go on YouTube and look at his hit highlights, <laughs> you'll really see. He, he, he doesn't play his position all the greatest, maybe less below average, but he will hurt you. And we saw with Dallas what hurting people can do for you, even if you're getting outplayed, as we mentioned in our Dallas video, which you all got to check out right away here, right yeah, exactly. after this, you're going to go there. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So anyways, those are freaking awesome, you guys, for uh, the, I, you brought up some things that I, I didn't really even take into account. Like for instance, uh, picking up Walmart and that is a possibility of being able to flip them. Um, the uh, I really think that again we were to, um, we were talking about beforehand about Stan Bowman, uh, who is Scotty Bowman's son. They do things in a way that other people don't really understand. A lot of the time, Scotty always did that when he was a general manager. He would make moves, and people were like, "What the heck's this all about?" But if you look yeah. at the picture after it's all yeah. over, you go, "Wow!" And yeah. I really think that this idea of not having goaltenders is going to go a long way to convincing these guys because they have to be convinced. Taves, Kane, and Keith love, love, love Chicago. Do it's they're going to have to. You're going to be ripping it out of their hands. You're going to be good. like really. They've gotten cups from there. Come on. Of course, they they love, love, love Chicago. In order to convince them to leave, you're really going to have to make them feel bad about staying. Yeah. And you know that's what? They might not leave right away either. And they, and that's probably why nothing's happened right now either, because you might not be able to see. And, and these these might be some things that we might see, maybe not now, but by the trade deadline. For sure. You know, because now they're going to have that amount of time to see. Hey, look, we're playing really bad. You know, we squeaked into the playoffs. We barely made it. We're getting older. The the. The, the team has come out and said we're, we're going to clearly be in a rebuilding. So yeah. it's not – look, then again, you know, you might not have a whole lot of people lining up to go, oh, so we can have Kane, but we have to pay $8.5 million? Well, we don't have $8.5 million. You see what I mean? So there's not going to be a lot of teams – that are going to line up to be able to say, well, we can take on most of that salary or all of it. I don't think they're going to be able to take all of it. I think I think Chicago is going to have to eat some of his salary. For sure, for Taves, I think you're right there. I think they'd have to eat at least two million. At, at least eight and a half. Somebody because might... he's got more than two years left on his deal. He's got a long time. That's what I mean. So if you have more than two years left on your deal, the, well, the... they both have the same length left on their deal. They're Taves both after twenty two, twenty three. Yeah. And Kane. Okay. Is Taves only three more years at ten and a half? Yeah. I don't have it in front of me. I didn't put it in front of me. Okay. Well, you know, if you cut two off, I'm sure I'm sure there's a team out there at the trade deadline that thinks they're gonna win a cup. You know, if you want to win a cup, having Taves on your team is a pretty good guy to pick, regardless if he's a fifty or sixty point player the guy we saw in chicago what he did for against edmonton the guy's a beast when it comes playoff time we also saw what he did against uh philadelphia too <laughs> yeah okay yeah. so uh look he's a beast, man. Uh, yeah so he's a beast in playoff time so i think somebody would pony up the dough for that there might be a team out there for it if you if you hold off on that and kane i i don't think you're gonna have to eat any of it honestly I, t- uh, I mentioned it in the video I did. I think a team like San Jose, San Jose who sh- probably should have been rebuilding, 
but then went and got paid ten and a half million or eleven and a half million for Carlson till yeah. the end of eternity. Um, will won't be able to. Would be smart to pick up a guy like King because they're not rebuilding, so you might as well go what for about Florida? those kind of guys. May may take on those contracts. What about Florida? Florida, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, if they're gonna if they're gonna lose good. Hamilton, they're gonna lose Hamilton, and he's the same kind of money. Carolina, Carolina. Hoffman. Hoffman. Do you mean if they're gonna lose Hoffman? Hoffman. Hoffman. He's Hoffman, Hoffman. Yeah. Hoffman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The problem um, is, is they want to cut salary in Florida. That's why they're doing that. Sadly okay. enough, they just can't afford to pay. Yeah. As much as, okay. As okay. I wasn't Florida's sure. Florida's like the Oakland yeah. Athletics so of hockey. So, but I agree with not you. Good. Yeah, he's yeah. actually do good usually. So. <laughs> yeah. I think there'll be a lot of teams at the deadline that would, if they're in it and they think they can win it, they'll be not. They'll be calling up Chicago to pick. Guarantee. Guarantee. And that yeah, might be when we we'll see. But it. I think it goes. I think it goes. Kane, Taze, Keith, and I don't think anybody would argue with that because people no. trading. If there's a guy that you're not going to eat the salary for, it would be Patrick Kane. Everybody else, I think, unless if Taze comes out as a points per game guy next year again and just has a great season, then you might get away with not having to eat it because he's having another great career year. But even like 10 points less than the games you played, you're still not really a 10 point. Like, you're a great player, but that's <laughs> not a $10.5 million great player, 10 points less than the games you played. <laughs> that's more of a like $7 million, seven and a half, eight million oh, wow. player. Yeah. That's why I'm saying I think you would probably have to eat the contract of him in some sense because yeah. uh he's not what he used to be he's just still really good but he's not the over the top top echelon guy that Kane still is right. uh he's just a top, uh potentially top line center depending on what team he is that's the other thing too most teams that Taze gets traded to he might not be the top line center so are you trying to pay your second line center eight and a half or 8.9 million dollars or Ten million, like with the nine million dollars, yeah. because like that's the other side of it. Because if he goes to Colorado, for example, he's not passing Nathan. McKinnon. So, like, and he's getting paid more than Nathan McKinnon. Well, I so, don't know about that. That's not really. I I don't know if that's going to matter as much because Nathan McKinnon really took a homer. I don't know what he was doing, honestly. Uh, if I was his well, family, well, I know, agent, but, that, I but that's shaking. just one example. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, like, even if he goes to, Bo like, if Boston cleared up the money because they want to stock stack their centers again, like they used to back in the day, um, he wouldn't, pro he wouldn't be top line there because they wouldn't put him over Bergeron. No. So I mean, like, there's teams that if you you get traded to a contender, I think it does weigh. Well, after this year, we're now paying our second line. Oh wait, we got this kid coming up too. We might be paying our third line center nine million dollars. Like you have to, so like unless if you think, oh my God, we're sitting pretty, we're definitely going to win. That's the way I think it's going to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. consider down the line too. Otherwise, you're screwing yourself if you don't win. Exactly. Like right. you don't want to screw up the team if you don't win by having a young kid like the Kirby Doc of your team come in. And now becoming second line center, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now Taze is your third line center because you have yeah. a good guy at one, do like a doc s player at two, and then Taze. So like it's a, it's going to be interesting. I think there's teams. I think a team you could look for Taze to get traded to is probably a, a a sleeper team maybe because they would have more cap space because they wouldn't be expecting to be as good as they are. So like maybe one of next year's teams that are better than they're expected to be that then just keep kind of riding that hot wave almost like how people expected Tampa to be a really good team in baseball this year but never carry the whole AL pennant all the way to the World Series. A team like that that just always enjoys to continue and also has the money, money, money pockets unlike the Rays in baseball could be a team for a uh, tease, um, like for example, say Montreal's a surprise team next year, they don't have a lot of veteran center. Montreal would be, I was just going to mention yeah. Montreal. 
Look, look, we're all on the same page here because we all thought of Montreal. They don't have a lot of veteran centers. Because that... they've got Suzuki and Kokiniemi, and they don't want to go into a playoff with two 21-year-old kids. Yeah, Taze would be the perfect time. But we've got to finish up here, guys. Thank you very much again for coming. This is Steel Flyers. You, you should know him from the uh, steel, www.steelflyers website. And if you don't, start because it's awesome and it's going to be amazing. It is podcast with his beautiful wife and they're fantastic. Talks about all sports. Obviously, Steel Flyers fan, but everything in between, as you like to say. So, uh, Steel, thank you for coming in. And, always a uh, pleasure, my man, always. Yeah, and of course we have Mr. Joe Bork, who works with me in many ways. We have BPAL Picks. You go over there and find your uh, fine purveyor of sporting picks that you can get and uh, for different packages over there. You can check that out. He also has a uh, wonderful YouTube channel of uh, Sports Fanatic News. Uh, we, we, he, uh, he does, again, all sports on that channel. And we do all sports all the time as well. We do lives together. You gotta, you gotta be checking out the lives, right? Yeah, man. Right, Joe. That's right. Right. You yeah. gotta check them out. Exactly. Check out our lives on Steel Flyers Sports Fanatic News. I've been Pow. This has been the Professor. There's a reason why we call him Professor. He's brilliant. And Steel. There's a reason why we call him Steel because he likes to be called Steel. And <laughs> that's our full forty-two. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.